Hello, welcome to JV Show. This is Jorge. This is Viv. And uh, this week we got another random one. So last week we did an update Hello. episode. This week we're just going to do a random one. So I don't know if everyone does this or not, but because I've been doing this podcast, what I do sometimes is when I just walk around and hang out, I just think of a podcast idea and then I go on my to-do list and I just like write mm. down. So that'd be cool this week that we just go through some of these. Um, some of these I've had a bit more time to think of, but this is the first time Viv's hearing that. So it's kind of nice <laughs> to see the see the difference the duality of it so that'd be pretty cool um also if you hear any crunching i'm eating these chicha corn filipino chicha corns and the alvin got from the philippines and they're pretty good remind me of corn nuts yeah and tall's crying right next to me so <laughs> that's thing here. um so the first thing first random topic on my to-do is is uh, this is a fun light one okay when is a minute not a minute? So mm-hmm. randomly, well, you're doing a that. plank. That's that's the, obviously Holy the shit. very first one everyone <laughs> thinks of, right? Like when you're doing a plank. But then I also thought of, all right, when else does this happen, right? When you're heating something up in the microwave and you're hungry as fuck. Mm, okay. <laughs> so true. I agree with that. When you're hungry as fuck and you heat something up, when is a minute not a minute? Usually, when a girl says she'll be out in a minute. <laughs> That's usually never exactly a minute or even close to a minute. You know um, what I used to do? I used to say an odd time because I feel like most people can gauge how long five minutes is. Yeah. Or ten minutes. Yeah. But if you say something like seven minutes or 13 minutes, they're like, the fuck? Okay. Mm. And they're like, okay, I'm just going to wait a bit. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> so those are the nice, easy ones. But I wonder a minute. when oh. else... Is it really used, right? The fucking beep test. Yes, that's if you're for like sure. a minute of the beep test, you're like, oh my god, it's yes. over. When you do anything physically challenging, I wonder if there's any like mental aspect to it. So, for example, okay, the question: When is a minute not a minute? I feel like if you really think deep into it, is like when do you kind of lose the sense of time, right? Mm. So. Not specifically because of this, because I think I heard, thought of this topic before, but when I was in the sensory deprivation tank, time was, like, weird. Mm. Because you can't see time, right? Yeah. So, like, if I said that, okay, I'm going to move my arm in a minute. Like, I, I wouldn't even know if that was five seconds or if that was four minutes. Right. If that makes sense, right? That's a, weir- that's a weird one, too, because I'm, like, you have no concept of time. Right. Right. And that's like a mental one now, not really like a physical one, right? Like when you do a plank or when you're hungry and you're waiting for the microwave and stuff like that, that's more like a physical, uh, not torture, but like a physical pain, right? Like I, another one for me is like in a steam room, a minute's not a minute because a minute at the very beginning when you go to the steam room is the most relaxing thing in the world. Mm-hmm. But then a minute at the very end when you about to leave but you're really challenging yourself that's like the most torturous thing in the world right so now these are two things that we are objectively a minute but we treat them so much different or we feel that they are so much different right i agree i assume like when you do cold plank or it's not sorry cold plunge oh yes every minute changes a lot yeah right the feeling minute by minute also changes right it's kind of cool because this is like uh a question of a play on word also kind of like you know yeah like, like the concept of time itself i would say when you're having a lot of fun somewhere and you yes. don't want to leave and you're like okay just one more minute yes yes and that minute's always so gone so gone by so quickly yeah. so yeah. S- same as that as what i thought of too is i'm not sure how much sports you watch viv but sometimes oh my god some yeah. plays at the very end like a minute matters so much yeah. right or it matters not at all right like in hockey holy yeah. shit a minute you have so much time to do shit yeah yeah exactly so like when myself if i'm like actually skating i would think a minute felt like nothing yeah. right but when i watch hockey and the play is a minute it feels like they could have scored three goals in that minute right right like and then, every 10 seconds something's happening especially if yes. it's like the last part of the game so then it goes back to was that last minute a different minute than the first minute because like if they played with that intensity the first minute they would never get to the 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 level mm. of they needed to in that last right. minute too right? right and then that same with like obviously basketball football and all these other things like that right that minute is uh 
changes minute by minute but also each minute right. is like a different the last minute is always the most crucial yeah yeah and it's like it's so tough too because like you think about it like you physically think about a minute and then your your concept of that 60 seconds is so different like mm. you know i just popped uncle ben's in that's it but to them this is like their title shot or something like that right yeah. like it's so different and both in both situations we're doing we're going through the same time passage which is uh quite i don't know unique and interesting right and a life or death situation i'm sure the minute will feel really fucking long yes or like if you're really stressed or anxious about something so the stress and anxious part it's almost like hey give a one minute presentation mm-hmm. a, uh, i think oh yeah depending like a on one minute long speech like in toastmasters yeah so like depending on the level of your proficiency that minute could feel like the longest minute or it could feel like the shortest minute of your right. world right because it could feel like literally nothing has passed because you're so proficient and you have so much you can talk about and articulate and stuff or you're so noob at it that you rush too much or something like that or you're mm-hmm. too slow and then all of a sudden it feels long now right yeah your table topic would feel like super long if you're new to it yeah and then just any presentation too right like i think back then in university we're like we were given the task of doing a five minute presentation or something mm-hmm. and we're like easy you know five minutes every day in class we go through 50 minutes we go through 10 of these five minutes right how hard is it my lecture is up there for for 10 times as long as i have to do this presentation yeah but then all of a sudden when you do the presentation you're like oh shit like i can pack a lot of content in five minutes a lot right. to consistently consistently be talking. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. And especially when you're not experienced, like I've always had this problem where I speak too fast. So then my minute, I don't use up the minute properly. Whereas like if I put proper pauses or elongated my words a bit more or thought more during my speech or whatever, it would be more impactful and that minute would be different now. Right. So... I feel like there's a lot of scenarios and situations and that when is a minute not a minute? I feel like, damn, that's kind of... I feel of- like if you're really embarrassed about something, say somebody pulled your pants down or pants you yeah. on stage, that minute would feel so long. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. But then not just to you now. So yeah. the other question is, when is your minute duration shared with other people? We've, we've talked about situations where they're not shared. So like my minute skating compared to these NHL players on the final minute of a game, they're Mm -hmm. completely different. But when are they the same? And I feel like that scenario you brought up about someone getting pants, not only is the minute long for you, it's so cringy for everyone, for other people. Like Mm -hmm. if it was a bully that did that and you're a third person looking, like that minute is so cringy for you too because it's like, wow, that's not right. You shouldn't do that. But like you can't, it's kind of weird. You can't do anything or you, you could, but it's like an awkward situation. Or like busting a nut in a minute. What are you saying? It's really short or really quick? <laughs> like I said, it, it's so different for different people, right? Oh, yeah. For right. some people, it could be the exact same. Right. And uh, I think guys always get flack for that too. But I wonder if like... I would find it as a compliment to, to an extent. Like if you're always having sex with somebody and then they always bust a nut in a minute, then you'd be like... <sighs> You know, like, can we, can we just do something for a little bit longer? <laughs> but in it, to an extent, it's also kind of like a compliment. To the person who's performing whatever act yeah. on the Yeah, but also, we always give guys flack for that. But I wonder, can girls orgasm in a minute? Probably, I assume. I think so. Right? Yeah. So the only difference is that... Um, for guys, it stops, though, usually. Yeah. That's why. Yeah. yeah. For guys, it gets... You're, you're done. Like, yeah. the session's over. But for yeah. a girl, they'll be like, okay, I'll just get another orgasm yeah. right but guys like what the fuck go with you guys are like come back in like maybe an hour yeah yeah exactly or i think the whatever word it was it started with an r period is like half an hour um oh to or get guys. back yeah i think it's uh it's tough too because i'm sure there's some neurological things too yeah I like you're so. not as attracted as initially yeah like the and minute you saw clarity. her the minute you saw her you were way more attracted than the minute after you busted yeah it, right so i feel like that that comes into play quite a bit too 100 <laughs> <laughs> percent. but no it's cool i just i just i don't i actually don't know what the context was when i was i was thinking about this question it's like these are like 
Jorge random thoughts. Like random thoughts just come up to my head. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, this would be a really cool topic. Like when is a minute not a minute? Because because when I say that, I know factually everyone's going to say, oh, plank. Oh, right? mad minutes? Oh my God. That too. But factually, they'll be like plank, uh, minute rice. Like I feel like those are all the cliche ones. But then when you think deeper, I was like, holy shit, you could turn this, when is a minute not a minute into like a full essay too. Mm-hmm. Like part of it was just, you know the cliche meme shit and then part of it's like oh shit this is like it could potentially be some deep stuff that's why i think at least i don't know you need in a minute to like prepare for something have you ever actually used a minute to prepare for something no i feel like the whole minute you just (laughs) (laughs) oh shit oh shit all right all right right, you got this (laughs) Because we always see the expression, give me a minute. Yeah. And unfortunately, I feel like girls more than guys do not succeed in using that minute. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like sometimes if I say, give me a minute to Joyce, like she'll say like, oh, go get changed. I'm like, give me a minute. And I literally just throw on a shirt and a pants. I'm like, I'm done. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, oh, I, you know, I've completed the task in like, a minute. Give me a minute phrase is definitely more of a phrase, at least to me. Yes. Than the actual minute itself. Like if I say, give me a minute and you actually give me a minute, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> Right. So then, so now it goes back to between genders, it means different things too. Mm. Right. When I give someone a minute and if you're a guy or a girl, or I, at least when I ask someone to give me a minute and if I'm a, if the person you know asking that as a guy or girl, that changes too. Right. Mm-hmm. So if it changes by sex, will it change by age? I wonder if like a minute feels different. It, it must like if you're different. on your deathbed. I think. Yeah. Or like when I was a kid and if, I, I, I never got this bullshit timeout stuff, but I can only imagine timeout for a minute's kind of annoying, right? It's like fucking yeah, lame, it's a waste of time. Right? But then when you're an adult and you're stressing about life, a minute is nothing. You're just sitting there, just, you know, stressing about life. And then like 20 minutes have passed. 20 of those minutes have passed. Whereas when you were younger, each of those minutes would have been torture. Mm. Right? Or you're like face the wall or some shit like that. Right. So it changes with the gender. It changes with age. I wonder what else it might change with. I, I, I assume ethnicity it won't, but I'm not sure. Because the other thing you have to think about too is like, if you talk to a priest, a monk or anything like that, a minute doesn't mean too much to them because they're always in prayer where like they can go into this different dimension for a minute so easily, right? Where they're in like a very deep prayer and they can do that for infinite amount of time, it feels like, right? Whereas for us, it's almost impossible, right? Like if you were to tell someone sit still sit completely still for a minute i honestly feel like a lot of people won't be able to do that mm-hmm. right whereas if you told like a priest or a monk like sit completely or a nun like sit completely still for a minute like they do this almost every day like it's part of the practice right so it definitely changes by gender it definitely changes by age and not really ethnicity but like, like there is some graphic locations change like if you live in a really busy city mm, yes. you're very used to being on the go like new york or some shit yeah, yeah yeah versus if you live out in some rural area yeah you plant fucking rice yes yeah i mean it would be easy compared yeah. to someone that's always on the go yeah like as it's weird because as definitive as time is like i feel like time's relatively well defined right like we know what a second is what five seconds is what 60 seconds is right Mm -hmm. it's still so relative like such a definitive things like there aren't there isn't much things in life that are as definitive as time yet there's not something in life that is such relative in time and like Mm -hmm. as time too right which is like really weird right it's a very Mm -hmm. weird concept because like the whole concept of time is relative, yet it is so definitive, right? Because like mass, you can, you know, yeah, one kilo is one kilo, but does something weigh one kilo? And, you know, you get to the, you know, the nanograms and shit, and then now it doesn't weigh one kilo. It weighs 1.0, yeah, whatever kilo. Time. But time is time, right? Like one second is one second, 60 seconds is a minute, right? So yeah, very, um, these are the weird, this is, Honestly, most of the time when I go for a walk with Taro, this is the random shit I think about. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just saying, because, I think shit similar to this too. Because um, back then I would just think of this, but I would have no outlet for it. And then now with the podcast, I'd be like, oh, that would be a cool podcast topic. Let me just like fucking bundle this up and take some time and think about it later, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. You know what's kind of cool too is how people use time differently. Like my number one example is that if you live in, Alberta, I'm not going to say Edmonton specifically. I think it's Alberta specific. You'll measure distance by time and nowhere else does that. I think, 
I think a lot of places in North America does that, no? They'll go like kilometer or miles or something like that? Yeah. Hmm. Versus for me, if someone says that, it doesn't really make that much as much sense to me as True. You mark something by time. Mm. So as an Edmontonian, I can't say factually, but I think this is what you would do. If someone said twenty kilometers, you'll think back to be like, How much time does it take to move twenty kilometers in Edmonton? And they'll be like, Oh, okay, twenty like fifteen minutes. Okay, so you're you'll you'll, you'll back calculate. You yeah. know how like some people count in a different language? You'll do yeah. that, but with distance. That's exactly what I do. I'm like twenty yeah. kilometers, okay. Yeah. I was driving on this road for this fast. That means it'll take that's okay. I don't think okay, how far is twenty kilometers? How long did it take me to travel twenty kilometers? Yeah. I think okay. On a 60 kilometer per hour road, I drive 60 kilometers an hour. So that means if someplace was 20 kilometers, then that means it's probably going to take me like a third of the time of an hour. Is that is that how you think of it? Yeah, that's how I think of it. Oh, how I think of it is like, all right, it took me, it takes me about 20 minutes to get the EVP. So about that distance ish. And then if I know that's about that many kilometers, then I would yeah, just back that. Minutes. Yeah, then that's, that's how I'll kind of back calculate that too. I don't know the distance like at fucking all. I mean, I know some, but not much. Um, but yeah, that's how. That's honestly how I also think of it too, right? So when someone says it takes, you know, it's this far, I'll try to use like Edmonton time of mm-hmm. traveling, right? So that is weird because, yeah, we do use it for like a distance thing in in Edmonton specifically, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's a cool one. The when is a minute? No, a minute. All right. My next one, I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to. Okay. This one's kind of cool because I usually think of this. I think I was thinking of this when I was coming back on my trip. Have you traveled more in a car in distance or in a plane? Right car. You think so? So I'm not sure because like I was thinking like okay, if I do four trips a year, like how far? <laughs> let's just say one random place, like from Edmonton to let's just say um, let's just say Edmonton to Miami as an average trip distance for me, right? Some might be shorter, some might be longer, right? Uh, Edmonton to Miami distance, okay. So the distance is about four thousand kilometers. Oh, actually, now that you say that. So, they're in back. They're in back. See, that's 8,000. Okay. Say, the I... How many kilometers you add to your car every year? That's that's the other thing you think about, right? So, if you add 20,000 kilometers, you add to a car per year. Say, that's mm-hmm. average. But your trip is 4,000 kilometers one way. And say you only do three trips, right? So, that's 8,000 times three. That's 24,000 kilometers. Yeah, you're right. It's definitely plain. 100% but but plain. but it also depends on the person too, right? Yes. Like what I thought of too is like, okay, if I fly to Vancouver, right? I feel like flying to Vancouver, people might do this trip more often, right? Um, the distance between Edmonton to Vancouver. Uh, okay, so this is kind of skewed. So it's one thousand one hundred fifty nine kilometers, but that's per road. So let's say it's just a thousand kilometers. Yeah. Uh, may- maybe even a, a little less by plane. So if you took 10 trips to Vancouver in a year, that's 20,000 kilometers. Yeah. So, I mean, for Viv, that might be actually kind of realistic to take maybe, maybe not 10, but maybe at least four or five. And yeah. then you have a couple other trips. Then per year, have you traveled more by car or by plane? Yeah, I'm thinking okay, per year, possibly like in the last couple of years, probably a car. Mm. But in my whole life, Mm. For sure, plane by far. Mm. Car will never catch up. I don't think. You think that's for most people? You think it's kind of like skewed to us or something like that? So like, I I have a feeling that most people would be car like in on planet Earth oh, okay. or even like out of like half the people we know, it's probably car. Mm, yes, I do agree. So like, I think half the people we know only go on like one trip a year. Yeah. And that's usually, though, I do admit, probably a bigger trip, right? So let's say that's like Hong Kong, right? I think Hong Kong is a pretty good average. That's kind of central. So that's 10,000. So that's still 20,000. It's 10,000 kilometers to get from Edmonton to Hong Kong. So there and back is 20,000. So do you put more 20, more kilometers on your car than your plane? And then it also depends on 
how you use your car. So some people drive pretty far to work, right? Well, they think actually now I'm thinking about this. Okay, if if it's somebody that doesn't do one big trip a year, because I feel like most a lot of people don't do one big trip. a really? year. Really, I feel like one big trip is almost standard. I, yeah, I would imagine it's almost, it's pretty standard and very normal too. No. But then judging by like, I would assume if people go on one big trip, you would see it more often on social media at least once. And I'm not like fucking remembering ever how often I see this. Mm. Or like, oh, like out of however many people I follow on Instagram, these are the many, these are the amount of big trips I've seen so far or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's not as much as we say it is for people Mm. yeah i feel like i don't know maybe i'm wrong i do feel like okay other than the year before and the year after covid so like covid itself the two or three years of covid then minus one year plus one year other than that like range i feel like people might do one big trip a year yeah so if they do go to Hong Kong, okay, let's say Hong Kong is too racist because we're Asian. Okay, cause let's say they go France, right? France is pretty, yeah. pretty Central Europe, right? That's seven thousand three hundred sixty-four. So that's fifteen thousand kilometers, and that is that might be true that they drive more than they fly because fifteen thousand. I think average is fifteen to twenty. Let me see. Oh, this is so hard though because I feel like I, I'd like to imagine that a lot of people don't actually drive as much now as they did before COVID too. Okay, so in Alberta, the average is fifteen thousand. Is there a date on this? September... Oh, 2020, though. So I'm not sure. I feel like, in a way, that's kind of reasonable to gauge on that. Because I, I'd like to imagine that after COVID, a lot of people don't drive as much anymore because you work from home. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're a hybrid. Or you have a lot of shit delivered to you. You just don't make as many stops, you know? Um, and then gas prices are going up, so people don't go on like random drives as fucking much. True. But getting a ride from someone. Right. People so the question them. was... Have you traveled oh. a longer distance in a plane or a car? I, I, I'm going to say bus the same as car. I'm going to say like this wheeled transportation that's on the ground as all similar same. Except for bicycle, but everything else. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. Yeah. <laughs> right? So then if you get picked up and stuff, now I feel like the average is you know, bumped a little bit higher now. Mm. It's kind of a... I think also something to... There's also something to consider and that's... That you can't get anywhere in Edmonton really yes. without a vehicle. So like of some sort. If you were in New York, the question would be, have you traveled more on the ground than on the plane? Mm. Because like subway transportation, we would yeah. consider ground transportation, right? Um, I guess I only thought of car because I live in Edmonton and we mostly only use car. Right. right. Like fuck the LRT kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. Looks kinda of fancy, but like yeah. Yeah. So I, I so then Speaking of wait, first I'm surprised that when the LRT goes by, there's no fucking guardrails that come down to block other cars yeah, it from was, coming in. It was designed like that, like from the very <sighs> beginning. That's what they wanted. I feel like that's gonna cause a lot. Of yes, are <laughs> that's so much. Shit. That's the exact same thing I said. <laughs> <laughs> but I told them that I'm only building this. Like this I'm one not- time, I was at an intersection and then it was a red light, so I was just sitting there watching. Like, all these cars come by, and then the fucking LRT just drove by past me, and I was like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. So, you ever take the tram, or you ever see the tram in in, ter- ter- in Toronto? Oh, yeah. They, they want to emulate something similar to that. Go- close, yeah. It flows with traffic, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, no. That's going to cause a lot of fucking... <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure people weird. also hit the tram in Toronto a couple <laughs> times, too, so I don't know it may happen. Um, I'm pretty sure it will. But yeah, anyways... Going back to that, so there's two things I want to explore too. If we now talk about ground transportation, I wonder if people in like Japan, do they travel more on the ground or on the plane? Because they do take the train a lot and the train brings them pretty far, mm. I assume too now, right? Um, and not only- How about by foot in oh, these places? Oh, actually, I haven't thought about that. Let's see. I think Hong Kong has the most uh, walking distance. Yeah. Hong Kong average walking per year. Daily step counts. Okay, if we get daily step counts, we just times it by three hundred sixty-five, right? Yeah. Uh, What's the distance for steps? Oh, that's true. You can. I think we can average this somehow. Let me see. Where's Hong Kong? Was it ten thousand? No. Okay. Hong Kong takes home the prize for step counts with average resident clocking six thousand eight hundred eighty steps a day. 
average distance per step. 2.1 feet. Okay, fuck you. Feet to kilo uh, to meters. 2.1. So it's about 0.65. So 0 0.65 times, what is this? Hong Kong daily step count is 6,888 times 6880. So they walk four and a half kilometers a day. Holy. So that means in a year... Oh, it's not that much anymore. <laughs> in a year, they only walk 1,650 kilometers. Hmm. Right. Nothing compared to plane. Like we said, okay, we're going to average yeah. plane to say like 15 to 20,000 20, kilometers a true. year. I was just right? saying, Hong Kong is significantly smaller yeah, 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 compared to us like driving that's around Edmonton. And it's, well, like you can't, they're, they're, they're the highest too, right? If they have the most step counts per day, assuming right. all steps are about the same distance, right. then there's no one that beats Hong Kong. So that means no one theoretically on average the average person of a demographic doesn't walk more than one uh, 4.5 kilometers a day right. right um so then goes back to the ground transportation it's kind of cool like i wonder i wonder if some people drive more than they fly because like the other thing i think about is i know joyce travels a lot now because of me right mm -hmm. like i kind of force her to yeah. uh normally she wouldn't have traveled this much as as much as i make her to. but she also goes to and from red deer every week mm. right so people who drive for work or to work to red deer distance how often does she make that drive um once okay so how is it it's week on week off so she has one week in red deer and then she's back for a week okay so she drives 155 kilometers a week, pretty much, because you split that into two weeks, 300 kilometers. So that's 150 times 52 weeks. That's So she drives at least 7,800 kilometers only between Edmonton and Red Deer. That doesn't include all the driving within Edmonton and all the driving within Red Deer. If she drives an average amount, like how we do, that means mm -hmm. she's 7,800 more than we drive. So that means she would drive between 22 to 30,000 kilometers a year. So she would actually be... Other than me forcing her to go on all these trips, she would technically have driven more than she flew. That's pretty interesting. Right? If if she wasn't like if she didn't go on all these trips with me, she would drive more than she flew. For sure, I know factually I probably fly more than I drive. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. But you work from home sometimes too. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's just because I like going on these random trips. I, I'm sure that, like everything adds up to like me going to Vegas kind of boosted that up a bit and all these other things, right? The other thing I also thought of, we're also thinking about direct flights. We always have these weird layovers too, right? Sometimes, right? Yeah. Like I'm not fly. I'm not. I didn't fly directly from Edmonton to the Philippines. I flew Edmonton to Vancouver. That's the plane distance for that. Then Vancouver to Hong Kong. That's the plane distance for that. And then Hong Kong to uh, Manila. Oh, that so that true. does add a little bit. I'm not sure if it's significant enough to say it matters to this uh, th theoretical thought I think thing. It adds that. something a though. lot compared to driving. Probably. So I don't know. That's kind of weird. If you even go from city to city, <clears throat> that's yeah. a lot. Yeah. So uh, now that we have kind of this number comparison, I wonder how people feel about that. So if I told you you drove more than you flew, or if I told you you Fuck. flew more than you <laughs> drove, how would you feel about that, right? Uh, and I think it just depends on on the person. So like. If you're a farmer, you probably for sure drove more than you flew. I assume. Is and a tractor. Uh, you oh, probably because no, you had to watch your fucking crops. Because you're probably not going on a lot of trips. I assume. I I, I can only assume if you have uh, livestock and stuff, you're not really gone. <laughs> that See you, boys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the automatic feeder has been set. <laughs> yeah. Let me just call the barn sitter to come <laughs> and do my job. <laughs> right. So that's cool because now you think about depending on your demographic. <laughs> Uh, are you offended or not by saying that you drove more than you flew this year or you flew more than you drove this year? I think if it was a place that promoted walking more than driving and promoting and they promoted a more active lifestyle, then if we were comparing like walking and driving or whatever, then they would be more offended. Like Amsterdam mm. would probably be offended if you're like, oh yeah, you Mm. Drove more than you walked, and they'd be like, "What the fuck? No one drives in Amsterdam." Yeah, yeah, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. But then, oh, yeah, that's true. So then, 
that'll be comparing like if you're in New York, do you drive? Do you take ground pr- transportation more than you walk? Right, that would mm-hmm. be kind of a more realistic comparison because, for example, in Hong Kong, if you walk four and a half kilometers a day on average, yeah, like let me see how wide Hong Kong is. Hong Kong diameter. It's 60... Cl- no, never mind. Hong Kong... I- oh, this is going to be too much. This is going to be too much for me to figure out with just uh, <laughs> this area, 78. 78. Oh, I didn't know there was an Aberdeen in Hong Kong. <clears throat> oh, really? It's very popular there. I think that's where the Aberdeen in Vancouver came from. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a very popular area. Damn, uh, I thought that said Shrek up there. No. Shekel. Oh, yeah, I've actually been to Shekel. Uh, actually, I don't know. Because now that I think about it, can you even... If you do walk 4.5 kilometers... Oh, this Google is kind of dumb. Sorry, guys. I, I can't figure out this number right away. I'm, I'm too dumb to figure out, and Google is not helping me right now. There's a little one, one kilometer bar here. Uh, how many of these one kilometer bars is the circumference? <laughs> no, fuck it. I'm done. Uh, I, I only assume the diameter is probably like 20 kilometers or something like that. 20 of these the bars, maybe even 10, 15. <clears throat> oh, this isn't even, this is the island Hong Kong. Like, technically, this is Hong Kong too. And this is part of Kowloon, but it's Hong Kong still. Like, all of this is Hong Kong. But this is the Hong Kong island itself, if that makes sense. But anyways, bad, bad, bad comparison. But. I wonder if um if I told you or I told one of our friends like hey this year you drove more than you flew would they be offended I feel I like I don't think they would give a shit oh really <laughs> why because I feel like it's a metric of did you if people like traveling and they want to travel more it's a metric of I didn't travel enough in mm-hmm. terms of meaningful things right like yeah I drove to Calgary a bunch but that's not like meaningful right I'd imagine if you told somebody <clears throat> that was like an heiress or what was that a socialite what's that? What's heiress. That actually means a dumb person, actually. I'm not sure. Oh. But, like, basically a socialite or somebody that's, like, rich and famous and you told them that they drove more than they flew. Yeah. They might get offended by that. They might be like, oh, I have a private jet and I fucking drove more than I flew? Oh, mm. my God. <laughs> I do think one of these years in the next 20 years, I want to drive more than I fly only because I do want to take like a road trip across the states. Like, you could I, get a, a van and deck it out and everything. No, no, no. I don't. I don't want a van life. That's fucking bullshit. I think. Um, but I mean, if I ever have the opportunity to be able to do that type of drive, I think that'd be so sick. Yeah, to so, like sick. start at like Seattle, go down. Um, all the way to San Diego, go across to like Texas and like Miami and stuff, and come back up to like near New York and stuff. I think that would be a trip of a lifetime where it's like you truly experience all these states. But at the same time, I think I'd be very bored too. I think so. Like the drives <clears throat> in between, you would have to really create like a little system for yourself in order to maintain that excitement in between cities. Yeah, and I also feel like like maybe I'm not as well versed, but I feel like there's a limited excitement in American cuisine. Uh, I don't know. Gravy. I feel like being to Asia and being to Europe, I just don't respect American cuisine as much as yeah. maybe I just I should. There's a lot of diversity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like I don't want to fucking like eat McDonald's every day. Fifty different ways of preparing chicken, <laughs> and potatoes. Like I, still to this day, I think back of the food I ate in France. I think it's still my favorite. I quite enjoy French food. Anyways, um, cool thought experience. If you guys ever think, let me know if you've driven more than you flew or you flew more than you drove. It's uh, kind of an interesting one. Okay. Let's go a light one and then into a heavy one. Oh. Light one is, would you prefer a late fall or an early spring? <clears throat> uh. So it's like winter's always going to be the same duration. It's just like, is it pushed one way or the other way? Hmm. early spring same yeah. and i think it's because of the for us the anticipation of spring is such an overwhelmingly like happy experience yeah that i don't care about the late fall like late fall is almost like 
it's the coming dread. anyways like yeah. yeah you're only you're only extending the dread of winter okay. because i feel like as soon as like the first snowfall and the first cold day kind of hits you're kind of like okay now we're now my brain has fully accepted the fact that now I'm in i winter. am depressed yeah exactly <laughs> where but then it, before that you're like anticipating that depression which causes depression on its own yes. if that makes sense okay um so yeah, I feel like that's kind of an interesting one. And I'm, I'm curious if that's different for different people. Like if you live further south, if that's different or not. Mm. Uh, if late fall, early spring, like because fall and spring and summer and winter means different to you, right? To us, it's fairly distinct, right? Yes. Like winter to us is doom, <laughs> is doom, dread, sadness. it's cold. Uh, but Depression. at the same time, spring is like overwhelmingly happy but extremely short yes and then summer is uh, okay to me summer is nice and warm but also fuck ton of mosquitoes sometimes i love summer and um a couple weeks of heat wave is how i think of summer yes and then fall is kind of nice because it's like a transition period it's a i bring my jacket to work but i don't bring my jacket or i hold on to my jacket going home from school kind of thing you know wear more layers yeah um but then i think for us it's so it's so varied because we have such drastically different seasons because our sunset and sunrise is so different like if you live somewhere in like the philippines and miami or something closer to the equator you literally sunset every day at 6 30 and you sunrise every day at like 5 a.m. or something like that. Or like yeah. every day is very, very similar. Right? Whereas here it's like everything means so much different. Right? Um, the sun fucking sets at like 3.30. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, knowing about this uh, differentiation in season, if you ever do get kids, would you want to impart them on this? So like we grew up with the seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally would love it if my kids truly experience these seasons. But yeah. at the same time, I would love to live in like San Diego or some shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that'd be fucking sick. I think it's really <laughs> strange to be a human being and not experience something as universal and something that happens pretty much everywhere on the planet in mm. most places, mm-hmm. such as seasons. And I think it's fucking wild how some people are able to be like, I have never seen snow in my life. Mm. I have never been in like weather below negative five degrees anything i think that's fucking wild isn't the crazy part that we're the minority don't yeah. most people live closer to the equator yeah. so most people actually don't experience season and most people don't experience snow anything. i think that's i think that's crazy that's yeah yeah same and i think yeah for me like as much as i'd love to be like a snowbird and like fly down south every winter <laughs> and shit, uh-huh. i think if i were to ever get children i would i would make them suffer through this <laughs> like through harsh winters and shit because i just feel like i don't know it I just feels like it makes you a little less soft if that makes sense Angry. like it sounds bad but i've always thought like if i was a hobo in san diego my life would be not bad <laughs> honestly yeah i think the same thing if i became homeless and i absolutely had no way to f- like fix my life or whatever and i was set and meant to be a whole homeless person yeah for sure i would go somewhere warm yeah then like 90 percent of my problems would be gone yeah like if i was like 70 percent. if i was homeless in hawaii i'd be like well i could sleep on the beach i could try to catch fish got my coconut (laughs) life is fucking good i don't know it's not too too bad you pay 2k to live my life yeah (laughs) No, I don't want to be no fucking pineapple farmer. I want to be a hobo. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, most surfers are literally homeless. Really? <laughs> like in Hawaii, I feel like. Oh my god! Like they just live out of their van, oh, type yeah, of thing, yeah, like yeah, that, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they have a home. I'm sorry, but like they're houseless. Let's say, right? Yeah. I think it's really interesting to see for that what people need in order to be happy, like their yes. bare necessities. Like that person who just has a who has a van sorry remove the word just yeah. who has a van and is living their life every day just surfing yeah imagine if surfing is your favorite freaking hobby and you get to do that every single day and you don't really have like much else to worry about and everything's just exactly the way you like it yeah then this person is probably way happier than the person who has like a multi-million dollar home or could be you know what's even crazier that i think about like i've thought of the stuff you thought about before but you know what's even crazier i thought about 
Do you think their dog is happier? Because <laughs> they're with them all the time. Right. They're literally with them all the time. Yeah. They're hanging out. Like I feel like their dog is happier too. Yeah. Like not just are they happier, but their dog is happier. They have so much space to run around whenever they want, wherever they want. Yeah, and they're literally hanging out with their best friend every day, all day. Yeah, you don't have to randomly wash your paws just just because you stepped outside for a little bit. Exactly. Oh, well, uh, that okay. I think that actually goes into a more philosophical thing where it's like, um. If you only have X or this range of what you have, and you've never been shown more, like if you never had caviar, would you even be sad that you don't have caviar? Like right. no, because you yeah. don't even know what it is, right? Yeah. So like that dog doesn't even know what um, dog park is because the the world is his dog park. Like he doesn't need that concept. Yeah. He he doesn't know that concept, but it doesn't make him any happier because he loves this current concept and he yeah. doesn't need to know that, right? So I mean that's kind of. How about for the dogs? I feel like most dogs nowadays. Have been to the dog park at least once, or has have been able to like let like roam free at least once, and now yeah. that they've tasted that freedom once, and they're probably like, "What have I done to not <laughs> be brought back or let that freedom back?" I mean, okay, so as dog owners, I think it goes back to thinking like I I think about this all the time: Is my dog happy? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so then, when you are about to bring them to the dog park. They're like whining and they're so happy that they want to go. Then mm-hmm. you start comparing that. Hey, if you're at home just chilling, are you not happy? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean because exactly, you're you're comparing right? the two now, right? Yeah. It's uh relative to each other, uh, and I'm not sure because a part of me is always like, man, it's hard just sad just at home just chilling all day. But then at the same time, my friend always tells me, no, like he's just happy just hanging out with you. And I'm yeah. like, I think that's true too. I think both are true too, possibly. Yeah, I right? can see that. Like he could be a little sad, just like hang out if I like come home late from work or something like that, right? Yeah. But then him just like playing ball with me, I think that's already overwhelmingly joyful for him that he doesn't need the other thing. Like again, it goes back to he doesn't need to taste caviar, right? Like yes. to him, it doesn't change anything. Yeah. He's loving what he loves, right? I think that's a, a very a really beautiful side of dogs is that they're so pure. Yes. In this sense. Like, bringing them to the dog park, <laughs> yes, might be, like, super fucking happy. Yeah. But to them, in the moment, yeah. either just being with you or just playing, like, catch with you or fetch or whatever is equally as happy to them. I think, like, one reason why humans love dogs so much is, well, what I believe is that that innocence and naivety is, like, something we love so much. Uh, and, and that we lose, yeah, we lose it so early on, right? Yes. And it's it's like to us, it's so it's so beautiful seeing that like innocence and that naivety. It's like, yeah, it's weird. It's like you want to protect that. You want to like make sure that that thing is in like a safe bubble mm-hmm. where it can always be happy and innocent and naive of the world, right? Yes. And yeah, I think that's it's. I don't know. It's great. I think it, it gives you a, a dimension of your life that. Not everyone has. Like, I mean, it sounds sad because I know some people literally can't have dogs because they're allergic and shit. I mean, I'm allergic. I went and got one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but until I got one, I didn't realize how much it changes your life. It's like, I oh agree. shit, this is like, changes my life completely. Like, it's almost like ever since I got Taro, I don't think, I don't think I would be happier in my life if I didn't have a dog anymore. So like, if well, so one day Taro will grow old and he will pass, right? Yeah. And I'll be very sad. But then after that, I will still want another dog because I feel like having that thing in my life was like way more beneficial than its cost yes i agree i think that if if i were to compare the ways that having a dog has changed me for the better changed my schedule changed how i view happiness and changed how i've learned how to love and take care of another thing i think all the benefits from that definitely outweigh how i was before i had a dog Mm. and i but i don't think i would realize just how meaningful having a dog would be for my life if i didn't have one yeah Yeah. and i think the gripping sadness of them going away one day is like like i've thought about it before i think about it like literally like every week yeah and it's like even that complete depression is still it's still worth it to have the experience yeah it's like kind of the whole shakespeare thing is like it's it's like to love is better to or like, was it like to love, love and loss is better yeah than to to have never loved at all right yes. or something like that right so i don't know for me it was like oh this is because 
other than all the stuff you said, I think the big thing it's taught me is like patience. Oh, I feel like yeah. I've never had this amount of patience for anything in my life until I got a dog. I was like, oh, wow. It's trained me. Like, as much as I trained him, it's trained mm-hmm. me to be um, a bit more empathetic, a bit more patient with other people, other things. Yes, right? for sure. And to be able to give something so much love. Yeah. Damn. I'd be, uh, I will be sad one day, that is for sure. Like, I feel like back then I never really realized when someone's like, oh, I had to stay home today because of my dog. And I was like, oh, you're just being a bitch. But then now oh. I think about it, I was like, oh, fuck, man, I, w- I would do the same now. I thought the exact fucking same <laughs> because I never had any pets growing yeah. up aside from fish. But yeah. the fish, they die, you just go buy a new one. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then your only responsibility, or at least this is how I connected with my fish, was like, oh, you feed them. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And then, oh, if they happen to die, okay, I'll just replace you then. But then... Whenever I heard my friends say, my dog passed away, and they'd be like crying for days, I'd be like, just go get a fucking new one. Yeah. That's the big deal. It's not that big of a deal, but oh my God, I get it now. Yeah, now you truly understand. You're like, oh, fuck. I get it. All right, enough of the depresso. My next topic is kind of cool, I think. It's what if you grew up a generation before or a generation after? Whoa. Like, have you kind of thought about that? It's like, yes, if, I have. if you grew up a generation after, you would be these Gen Z fucks <laughs> doing all these fucking TikToks. Like, I can't even imagine my life having to do TikToks. You know what's really funny is that I swear every single generation hates on the generation that comes after them. Yes. A slight bit. For sure. Like, it, it just comes with, like, growing up. For sure. 100%. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a kind of cool thought experience. Let's, let's, start with the, let's start with the after one because I think... It's fun to shit on them, but I think I think I think they are like you'd be a completely different person too. I, I think feel. so too. I think yeah. so too. I, I think there's um, there's the good and the bad too. So I think if I was born the generation after, um, I think my potential for growth might actually be higher. Like if I had Google to the extent it was now na- is now back Ooh. when I was in high school, I think I would learn a lot more. Yes, I, I think, think it's pros and cons, though. Yeah, that, yeah, actually. yeah. Like, I think I would be, I would learn a lot more, but I would also be very socially affected by the news. Yes. Like, right now, I'm so numb to the news. I, I don't give a fuck, right? Like, yeah, unless it directly impacts my life, I really don't care. But I feel like if you were to grow up a generation after, um, in Gen Z or something like that, then that should kind of matters a bit more to you. Like, because mm. you're bombarded with that at such a young age. Um... So I don't know, like there's that to it, but like the huge thing for me is like all the things I wanted to learn back when I was in high school, I felt like there was a barrier to entry, which involved the resources. And I feel like ever since say like second or third year uni, that barrier to entry completely dissipated with the advancement of like Google, Google search and the sharing of the internet. Like for me, it wasn't until about second or third year university that you actually fully felt the power of the internet to its fullest extent. Like you got to think about this, like 2013, that's 10 years ago. Like Google was better than the 10 years before that, but it wasn't as good as now, but it was still like quite advanced. Like, okay. If you think back, when was the last time search engines really advanced in technology? And I think when I was in second or third year, that was the last advancement. Like between 2013 and now, I felt like other than its efficiency and getting us the information, the advancement of the technology has not, there, there's no crazy advancement. Mm-hmm. It's just gotten better, right? I agree. But in like like the 2010s is when it finally got to a point where people saw how usable it was, right? Mm. So Imagine. I felt like, Sorry. like as much as I shit on Gen Z, I feel like I... Actually, this is still shaking on them. I would have like tried to like burst my potential as much as possible with all the possibilities there. Uh-huh. But that's in the mindset of my current mindset. So I don't know. Like me being in Gen Z, maybe I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, I think it's definitely more biased. Yeah, because you have your current mindset and you compare it to your previous experience or your experience with what you had to work with. Yeah, but I feel like there's also pros and cons. So even though you have more access to readily available information, yeah. you're also pitted against things that are not things that usually didn't exist before. Yeah. So like in our generation, I feel like you just had to get like a bachelor. And that was pretty pretty fucking good. Pretty fucking sick. But now, if you don't for a Gen Z's, if you don't have a bachelor, it's like what the fuck? You don't even have a bachelor's. And if you look at the generation before us, it's kinda like, oh, 
as long as you at least have high school, then then you're pretty fucking good. And if you have a bachelor, that's fucking amazing for your education. Yeah. And our generation, it's like, oh, if you have a bachelor, that's great. And that's almost kind of expected. Yeah. But for the newer generation, it's like, oh, you're getting your master's. That's almost the same kind of weight as bachelors yeah. in a way now. I feel like bachelors is almost, is, is, I agree with you, is like the minimum, but it's almost like you need to, at the age of getting your bachelor, already have a niche. Yes. Like you already have to have played the guitar for three years and be like, or four or five <laughs> years and be kind of cool with that to, for you to stand out compared to all the other drones out there, yeah. right? Like you have to have like some crazy project you've already started at like age 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, I felt like in, in our generation, our age, it's like, oh yeah, those people really got ahead, but everyone else, you're still doing fine. Right, but I feel like a Gen Z. It's like, oh, if you didn't start something at fucking in the womb, you're you have you're years screwed. Of experience at age seventeen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you didn't start in the womb, you're fucked already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's also how I feel like for them, which kind of sucks, right? Like their expectations are kind of shit. Um, but they also have if you if you also want to counteract that, they also have so much more potential in a lot of air, other areas because technology yeah. is so advanced. Yeah, like you can make you can have your own online business, or you can like get. A degree from an online university or you can expand your audience or your clientele yeah. or your business to all around the world now i think like with you and like other computer science as an exception like if you told a gen z person to make a website they'll do it like in half the time as our current generation would yeah. to make a website right yeah. like they have they'll be like oh let me just use this bother yeah. this yeah plug in to do it for me yeah, and then they'll just fucking figure that shit out. And then for us, it'll take a bit more time to really... Yeah. And I actually see that same effect, but on the other side. So, like, the generation before us, uh, most of those people are my bosses. Yes. And they all think what I'm doing is, whoa, like, how do you do that? All this <laughs> shit. I was like, dude, this is fucking easy as shit. I don't know what you're talking about right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but then, <laughs> I just had that kind of interaction with my boss today, and I was like, what the fuck? But, could you, but just imagine this. Like, 10 years from now, we may become in a manager position yeah and we may think the same thing of the I people think it's below. inevitable yeah because unless you're very highly and um up to date with tech and yeah. all the advancements yeah then you will eventually reach a point where technology will phase you out or whatever is new and in will yeah. phase you out and then you'll be like wait how do you do this again because if you think about our parents yeah. there are things that they knew how to do like okay maybe you ask them how to fax something and they're yeah. like oh i know how to work a fax machine yeah. like i know the ins and outs yeah but then their parents are probably like oh my god that is so cool yes that you know how to use a fax machine but now they ask us like how do you set up this account what is an mfa yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like it's inevitable i feel yeah i also feel like Personally, right now in my current job, like I'm reaping some of that rewards where it's like the the apps and the software that we're trying to implement was created by either my generation or the generation before me that was more technologically advanced. Yes. So then the managers that are the generation before me, that are my bosses, don't understand that, right? And for me, it's like, oh, this is like kind of my level of technology use. So yeah. it's like relatively simple for me. I can kind of figure this shit out. And I'm kind of in that gap area mm-hmm. where it's not super advanced technology. It's still yeah. using the old technology, but it made it a little bit more advanced. And I'm in the right timing where I can like pick that up really easily and just like be like, oh, this is how it's done. And then they'll be like, oh, that's so cool. You know, like to them, it's a niche. But to yeah. me, it's like, oh, this is basic shit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, like, it's nice because I'm taking advantage of that right now. Like I'm in like that gap zone, right? Um, like you said, the whole fax machine thing. But like one day, like, that thing becomes completely obsolete. But before that becomes obsolete, you can you could have done some really crazy shit. Like you could have like faxed like a dick to your friend or something like that. And yeah, that would have been like be really like, oh cool, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm kind of like reaping some of that reward. But yeah, I also think um I'm not sure because I feel like always in the news they said that they have more like mental health problems in Gen Z and shit. Yeah. I have no idea if that's true or not. I don't know how factual that is. I would actually imagine that Gen Z has less then I would imagine that our generation has the most. Oh, you think so? And Gen Z has less. Because I feel like our parents are probably like, I, I would feel, I'd imagine that our parents' generation would come second to ours and then Gen Z would be third. Because I feel like our, mm, our parents either, okay, yeah. I think our parents' generation had a lot of hard times with mental health because it was very taboo to talk about it. There weren't a lot of resources online. Yeah. But then I feel like 
our generation, even though in our generation, you kind of started hearing about it here and there with the advancement of technology. A lot of people got like alienated or if you wanted to step against the grain and wanted to try talking about it, you could you could have been like bullied or, mm. you know, ostracized early. And then I think it's because I read a lot of statistics on mental health. And I feel like I've read so much more articles that said that mental health was on a decline around, like, for our generation, more so than the new generation. Because I feel like for the new generation, also, no one gets fucking bullied. If you get bullied in this day and age, then, like, like, like I'm bully, sure people get bullied. But, but I'm the, also sure that if anyone finds out that someone's a straight up bully, that bully's going to get fucking bullied. Bullied, yeah. <laughs> like, bullying is not... Sh- cool or whatever it is and then i feel like it's also so much more common to talk about like mental health and make sure everyone's all right and be like okay wellness check blah blah all that stuff or be to be able to talk about like oh i see a therapist and be like oh yeah i'm so happy for you Mm. versus in ours or our parents generation if you said like you saw you see a therapist oh you're crazy yeah they'd be like what the fuck yeah 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 Yeah, i think true but so i think there's more awareness of that shit so now they're they're like you know knowing it's a thing Mm -hmm. like you know like aids was a no one knew about it everyone got it kind of thing or like you know herpes or shit and then they found out and they kind of like try to curb or curb it right to stop it um i also think like in gen z it's cool to be different oh yeah but like you can only be so different i feel like there's like some people who have to like fake it to be part of the club yeah, you know like, I mean? okay, some people are definitely going to get offended by this, but I swear, like, maybe, okay, yeah, maybe, okay, this is a very likely possibility that there are this many people that are a part of the fucking Rainbow Gang, mm. okay, like, the pronouns and all that stuff, and maybe it's also because, like, everyone is so willing and a little more accepting of people who are, but I swear, a lot, some of you guys just aren't, <laughs> and it just feels like, oh, maybe I do resonate with this or like the colors that this person wears a lot more or like this style a little bit more or i feel more accepted in this kind of community if i just like yeah highlighted this parts these parts of my personality and tried to adopt these things yeah yeah i i should on them all i don't i want to say all the time but i don't know like for me i i'm a bit more judicial with it whereas like i want to see some fucking proof like oh you're gay like i'm talking to you, you suck a dick <laughs> I don't think so, sir. <laughs> right? Um, and the weirdest part is we always... support them, by the way, guys. I'm just saying. It's just like I want some proof. Like, I, you, you. Yeah. Like, I don't mind. I swear, some things are done for attention. Even that's, if it's not about, like... That's actually the biggest problem I have. It's like... Okay, the biggest problem I have is when people say they're bi. I'm just like, I don't know. Why? Because I'm like... I mean, how's that possible? <laughs> yeah, I was like, if you get pegged or you peg another guy, like you're gay. I'm like, no, I'm bi because I also like girls. I'm like, yeah, but that's just another hole. Like, I don't think so. I think it's finding attraction between mm, like guys and girls. Okay, okay, like, fair I, enough. I can see what you mean. I thought I saw what you mean when you said like, oh, if you're willing to like fuck a guy, then as Alvin, you'd be gay. Yeah, is that because it seems normal? Or more natural to want to fuck a female. Mm. And then so, okay, if you also have preference for a guy, then it makes you gay and not bi. But I think if you have, like, an equal amount of attraction for both, then that would be bi, right? So wouldn't we all be bi, technically? Are you well, not, not, bi? Well, here, sorry, not, not... Okay, wait, you said equal, right? Yeah. But then, isn't there a spectrum? Like, could you be, like, 70% like girls and 30% like guys? Hmm, I think there could definitely be a spectrum. So, but I think there's, like... For people, it's... So is that, is that threshold 50-50? Okay. Like, that's so it, hard, right? Yeah, it is hard. I feel yeah. like we're going to talk about spectrums. You could be like, okay, so, like, I'm fucking, like, like I Cause, okay. associate myself with a water bottle or whatever. No, because, like... My pronouns are he, him on Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays, <laughs> and, like, she, her on Saturdays. But only Saturdays before 12. Like, okay, so... Here, this is something I'll admit. Like when I see like Chris Hemsworth, I, I think he's he's attractive. Yeah. Like physically, I'm like, oh, this guy's fucking hot. I think that's right. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't claim myself to be bi at all. But I think there's a difference. I feel like you can 
know that another human being is attractive mm-hmm. and like hot mm-hmm. and appreciate them for their features and stuff mm-hmm. like that i think mm-hmm. that's just like human to human yeah but i feel like depending on if you want to fuck them and like date them i think that is where where you're considered bi or not right? yeah okay yeah i don't know like i said i think a lot of people just say this shit until i get some proof i just want to be like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean i'm just like i don't know like i'm i don't want to like subject you to create a porno but i'm just saying like i don't know it just feels that maybe we're throwing the terms around too much yeah right but i feel like yeah when you brought up a spectrum if you bring up a spectrum for anything (laughs) everything gets so fucking messy so so for me it it, like it it does get messy but for me like i i just know like to me all this is bullshit but i do (laughs) wonder if i was the generation after in gen z You'd be offended yeah. so much. No, You'd be like, so offended right now. I, I, I would be... Yeah, no, like, if I'm me in Gen Z, I would be super offensive. Yeah. Because I think this is all bullshit. But if I told most people in my generation, I think all this fucking shit is bullshit, they'll be like, yeah, I think so too. It's Or, the, or yeah, they'd let you have your opinion and want to be, like, offended by it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. true. They'll be less easily offended and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I definitely think it's a generation <clears throat> thing because during our generations, like, something that has been brought up to me before... From somebody in the newer generation is that they're like, oh, your generation, the way that you guys, or at least in our group of friends, yeah. the way that we bond is that we kind of like make fun of each other in a way. Yeah. Like we like will like banter and have and diss each other. Yeah. Versus the newer generation will be just more supportive and just like outwardly kind. Yeah. Like we would, yeah, we would. Feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> for us, it's like, okay, can you stop? <laughs> no, they're just nice. They're just too nice of a person. But for them, they're like, oh, I love this person. This is my friend because they're always nice to me. Yeah. But for us, we're like, yeah, fuck you. And then that's how we feel friendship. You know, I feel like it's a generation thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm always, uh, like, I fucking edge you with that fucking whole LGBTQ stuff. I'm just like, <laughs> first of all, why does it have to be talked about so much? <laughs> that that's like my first thought. I was like, "Fuck, I don't care about all this like stuff." I I yeah. know it's offensive to other people. I was like, "I don't care about your fucking pronoun." Mm-hmm. Like when I call you because I need to buy a motor, I don't care about your LinkedIn profile if you're a fucking day or something like that, right? Yeah. Like the only merit I want from you is like I want this product. Yeah. And that's all I care about, right? I would ass- Okay, my take on the pronouns. Yes, if it means a lot to you, means a lot to you. Okay, like like no hate or anything like that. But for me personally, I'm like, okay, if you get that upset that someone uses the wrong pronouns on you when they look at you outwardly and can see that you were born, yeah, a certain sex, and you get offended by that, then it's like you put too way too much weight on this. Yeah, your Actually, identity is too fragile, yeah. or like based on other people's how other people view you. You're right. It's it's mostly from the, I guess why we think the generation after us is so soft is like how they get offended compared to how yeah. we get offended, right? Like, it, if somebody came up to you and was just like, oh, I think you're Japanese, would you be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no, because most people in my generation would be like, konnichiwa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, fucking like, sure. <laughs> like, they'll just play into it and just yeah. fuck around, right? Exactly. They'll just play into it a little bit and just, like, make it a little bit more offensive for both of you <laughs> and then they'll just move on after that, right? Like, what the hell? I'm black. <laughs> 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 yeah but then uh, yeah i wonder if we were born the generation after could we, like our humor must be different too then yeah I our humor so. our lingo for sure lingo I, i'm actually curious to our enjoyment in um in media because i can't really watch all the stuff the previous generation liked although mm. there are some classic time pieces like forrest gump like Forrest yes. Gump between my generation and the generation before it's always gonna be gold right I agree but like you talk about their version of Star Trek I'm like oh, fuck that shit man that looks like fucking <laughs> shit right yeah compared to ours or like, or like sitcoms of like heavy laugh tracks yeah like you're like ah, that's fucking bullshit right mm. uh, compared to what we enjoy now and then I wonder what they'll enjoy <laughs> after <laughs> us right like what what would what would media be like 10 years from now because that would be when Gen Z kind of takes over more of like what media is right because like right now i think all media is tailored to us yes us as in my current me and you our current generation and it's there to us us because we're the more income gaining group yes uh or maybe even a little bit to the the tail end of the generation before us right yeah yeah and right now it feels like most of the shows has to be like you know super meaningful not that offensive um you know like 
super meaningful as in like we care a lot about like character development plot all that shit like it gets really deep into it like i feel like sitcoms nowadays are not really a thing anymore <sighs> yeah, right hit the same yeah right but i wonder what's gonna be like the generation after us right like what kind of weird fucking thing would they be watching at that point or what kind of thing would they stress out a lot? or not stress out but like what would be their main thing because for us like i'll be honest for a while it was like the breaking bad and then it was yes. like the walking dead that shit I like those Munder. zombie shit was a big thing and then it came to like a lot of like crime shows and like mm-hmm. all that other stuff i wonder how it evolves after that or if it just reboots like if there's a cycle that we don't see that it just goes back to oh yeah that would be really interesting because yeah. i know for fashion <clears throat> fashion is a cycle yeah it just keeps kind of re- rebooting itself like mm-hmm. that right like like nothing's ever like until you see a nipple nothing's like oh that's surprising but even then and now yeah. it's like it's not even surprising now yeah right? i swear i swear if you like see one now you're like oh yeah great and then I felt like in the 70s it was like that. In like the hippie days, like seeing nipples were kind of just like normal too, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of interesting of how that like fashion, media, entertainment, all that stuff will become. Something that I think will change though <clears throat> is the amount of outwardly gore you'll see on things. Oh. Because I feel like during our generation or before, yeah. it's really okay or a lot more accepted to see something a lot more gory. Like if you watch Saw or anything like that. Or like like now, there's a lot of trigger warnings or disclaimers whenever anything tr- that might trigger somebody is mentioned or shown. Like it'll be like trigger warning, suicide mention, or trigger yes. warning mentions of blah 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 blah. And then you get so many trigger warnings for everything now. Versus in our generation, you, will, you like half the time you wouldn't get that tr- those trigger warnings, and like movies would be more willing to show those kind of things. Versus for the newer generation, like I'm trying to compare this to the show 13 Reasons Why. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. show got like so much flack for showing a girl slicing her wrist. Yeah. But I feel like in our generation, like I know it's a very bad thing, but in our generation, I feel like it wouldn't get that much flack for it. And it wouldn't be like completely cut off the show and edited out and yeah. everything like that. Um, I'm not sure. But when you were talking about that, I kind of drifted off to thinking about like horror. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Back then, horror was like so obvious that it was fake mm-hmm. right now i feel like it's at like the moonlight of it or like sorry not the moon like like at the very tip at the best that it can be because any more horror it can be it will almost feel cgi uh, like it will it'll, like if something is too gory it almost feels fake oh yes you know what i mean yes i agree like i feel like right now we're at the tip whereas if it gets any more gory it'll get it'll feel fake and if mm-hmm. it gets any less it'll feel like the bullshit old stuff like if you ever watch one of the old songs you're like, oh that's so obviously fake yeah, yeah, that it doesn't yeah. matter to you right now right okay. but i feel like in the next like five to ten years it's like gonna like peak and then it's gonna be like i don't know where they're gonna go for that i'd imagine they would sink more into your psych- the psychology of everything and the mental part of everything like when you get scared what's actually going through your mind yeah and what like paranoia do you have i i think yeah they're gonna like personalize the horror to like more of VR. your phobias yeah right because like i feel like there's no other where no other place they can like right now i feel like it's almost as scary as it can get where it still looks real yeah then after that they're gonna have to do something different to still make horror movies horror movies right because at some point our tolerance level of horror will raise too much right I agree. like back then you know saw was scary but if you were to watch one of the old saws you're like that's fucking bullshit right like like if you watch the the original Exorcist, like that's a fucking funny movie to us, <laughs> right? It's just like she's like a fucking you know she sounds like a dude screaming and she yeah. just and like pro- she projectile vomit cor- contorting and stuff. You're like God, yeah, damn. because we were grown up with like The Grudge and Ring and like that all the f- fucking the like spooky ass shit. shit. Yeah, or like uh, like Paranormal Activity or what's the one with um um the black guy scary movie Thunderman. <laughs> no but no no the the one made by not is it jo- jo- is it jordan peele the one the the scary movies he he makes uh um fuck. i was gonna say mirrors scared the shit out of me too yes that one too but wait is it jordan peele yeah uh was it one? get out get out was the one i was thinking oh of. i actually like, haven't watched it becomes more um like crazy psychological fear yeah. too also right and, but we grew up with that type of shit then it's like 
you know, the stuff before doesn't really matter anymore. Like, it's like what can come next. And then right. it almost feels like those Black Mirror shit's going to be like self, self-realizing. self Like, like that Black Mirror shit's going to be true where it's like it taps into your phobias and shit. Yeah. I think that's why Black Mirror got as popular as it did. Yeah. Because everyone is, it's tapping into the concerns and fears that, that people have now and showing you possibilities of things in the future. Yeah. Like, I remember watching one episode in the newest season where it talked about terms and conditions and how no one really reads the entire terms and conditions. But then, I don't think this was a scary episode at all, but I thought it was, it really shined a light on how far a company can take it. Yes. Where this chick just signed a terms and conditions for making a Netflix account and basically (coughs) owned her life and reproduced her life into a TV show and showed every single, like, minute detail of her life and she was like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy because, like, Ideally, that shit I never have to deal with. That's like problems my kids have to deal with. But yeah. who knows, right? Because like everything's advancing so much faster. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we also say that it's our kids and like the next generation that deals with it. But like we forget to think that, oh, we're still alive during that time. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like ideally, I'll have an acreage somewhere far, far away from other people. <laughs> Off the grid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ideal. Like, like, I feel like when we were kids, not even kids, but even teenagers, we thought those were like the crazies. But then as we grow older, we're like, those people are kind of smart. Yeah, like those off the grid people, bad. I feel like they kind of know some shit that we don't know right yeah, now. Right? right? Like you have your own entire space. You can like you know, not rely on government and all this other random yeah. bullshit that's happening in the world. I think it becomes a lot more <laughs> welcoming of an idea when you think about like before COVID, how often we left the house to do all these things. And now how there's yeah. so many like automated services that just come straight to your door. And imagine yeah. you don't, you can like have that as a, in a self-reliant closed system just for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the, the one good thing about being the generation before too is like, you can actually own a, like a house pretty easily, I yeah. guess. And then you could, I mean, you could reap all the rewards of this current technology. Yeah. Uh, like... Mm. actually no I'm, I'm not sure is your house a smart home yeah yeah but i also think like parts of it suck because there's such a big barrier of entry to that technology like it feels like for my parents it's so hard for them to get into this technology even if I they knew something. english i feel like it's still difficult for them um for my parents it's the same too like how scary is the world gonna feel for us me and you in thir- thir- 30 years from now Right, because my our parents are struggling with this new technology. Like, could you imagine thirty years from now how much we'll struggle with whatever's out there at that time? I would actually imagine that we'd struggle <clears throat> less in comparison because we're already exposed to technology in itself versus our parents are like the difference between like zero web versus yeah. web one. Yeah. It's not as crazy as like web one and versus web two. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Fair But then I still think we'll struggle for sure. Yeah, Actually. it's kind of like how you kind of mentioned before that, you know, they mastered the fax machine and they thought this was it, right? It's yeah. like, we're mastering current, you know, our internet and our ship and we think, you know, this, it can't get any crazier than this. And then next thing later, they're thinking on total dimensions that we're never even thinking about yet, right? Uh-huh. And then some shit like Ready Player One comes <coughs> up and they're like, what the hell? You like live life? Dude. In real life? Like that's going to happen s- so soon they're they're gonna have that and then we're gonna be like you're wasting your life away on this shit <laughs> yeah. and then they're gonna fucking be like a multi-millionaire and shit doing so- like it's you know not how- even a real world like you know like, how like mom in web four i'm a millionaire yeah like you know how like competitive gaming has been shunned upon for so long and then like like five six years ago it just blew up and just be like yeah. all these kids are making like fucking millions of dollars streaming playing competitive gaming and all this shit and then now parents are like oh fuck versus if you tried that in our generation you're like you're wasting your time yeah and i wonder how the next generation is going to cope with that too because like a lot of the biggest streamers right now are about our age a little bit older like what's the next generation of the xqc and the you know like the big the big streamers and shit right um probably all the kids that play league yeah or cloud nine and shit like that but i feel like so young right i feel like that's not enough anymore it's almost like you have be- to stream something. Like back then, being good at games was enough for you to become a streamer. But I yes. feel like now it's like you need personality. Oh, for sure. But I wonder how much of that is fake too. Like for sure. I don't know. I'm I'm always curious about that. Like I'm very um, 
anti-social media obviously mm -hmm. so i wonder how the generation after us is navigating this like a part of me is envious of the generation before knowing not having to deal with it like my parents are so happy for social media because uh i feel like they've never gone through the full cycle of it uh and i'm not saying i know more than other people but i've been through the cycle where it's like i i, I grew up not grew up but like social media started when i kind of started university or it got bigger a little bit before i started university yeah and i went through it and then i saw the good in it the joy in it the love in it and then i saw the ugly in it and then i left it yeah right? and i felt like my parents only see the good in it because they're in like for them it's the early life cycle of that whole cycle i just spoke of yeah and then for these next generation i wonder how they're gonna deal with that too that's true because like who knows maybe like i'm probably a minority so i'm probably wrong so I, like maybe i do have to go back to social media one day but i just kind of don't really mm -hmm. care for it right now right <clears throat> i think it's really interesting to see what applications the next generation also uses yeah i definitely feel like like twitter got phased out so quickly so like abruptly too in a way like you think it's not being used as much anymore or no like elon musk bought Twitter yeah it's like and he fucking destroyed it and fired everyone and like everyone hates it now or like a lot of users have moved to threads oh is that the new thing threads kind of yeah oh i have no idea <laughs> and then yeah i feel like it's so easy for another platform to take over and for it to look really different oh so like i know a lot of the younger generation people they use something called be real and i believe the concept of be real is that on social media a lot of people have time to edit their posts and really like yeah. create a fake persona yeah. but on be real it's i believe you're prompted every so often every yeah. day maybe every like couple hours or whatever to just take a picture to be like update on what you're doing where you are where you are uh, and then you can't do anything to picture you can't change your filter or whatever and it's just instantly uploaded so uh, it's supposed to show like your life with a real lens or whatever and a lot of people use that now apparently oh fuck yeah. interesting like yeah. if i was there i would like to get popular i would just take a sh like i would take a picture of a shit every day <laughs> and then start my account but just upload all those pictures as much as i can but i'd have to hack the system Damn obviously shit. right yeah, but then yeah. you'd obviously be popular because you're actually curating shitting it. every single time so, your be real prompts you to take a picture I, actually that be real thing is kind of cool too because i wonder if people can pay to cheat the system too oh yeah to create a certain lifestyle or profile yeah because that will generate you know popularity which will help them generate revenue which they can pay be real to probably i wouldn't yeah. be surprised yeah damn so they can even fake being real fuck yeah. i mean i'm very skeptical so i like think of these like very dark ways uh -huh, of like cheating uh -huh. shit so i mean if i can think of it i'm sure someone else can oh yeah i'm sure it exists then <clears throat> that's cool actually so when i before i quit social media um facebook was about to die and i think instagram was starting to come up yes and that was when i quit yeah and i saw one cycle of it and i was like i don't want to go through another one i'm kind of done with this shit uh, and that was interesting that was very interesting because i feel like there might be a better way but i'm not sure how it's really interesting too to see what platforms each generation uses more yeah like i think that facebook has transformed into a platform where people of the older generation would use more and an instagram would be like the middle range and then i don't know yeah tiktok would be the even younger generation i feel it's weird too because it changes um geographically too i feel like in asia they still use facebook uh oh, yeah. like in like vietnam and philippines and stuff they use yes. facebook quite a bit still and in china they use tiktok yeah yeah so it's like the advancement of it is different and it's like different in different region too yeah so i don't know i feel like okay so other than all this theory and shit what do you think you would be if you were to okay if you were in the previous generation what do, what do you think what do you think your life would be like um i feel like what i first think of when i think of that question or how to answer is that i feel like in some ways i would feel a little more aligned for like culture and culture and um like what's in in a way because i feel like in a way i'm still very attached for music to like rock 
and punk rock type of music. Mm. But that's not really common nowadays. Mm. And then I still collect vinyl records and like playing like, yeah, vinyl record stuff. And I feel but like that's, that's cool now. It's like hipster now, but it's not mm, common now. Versus it back in the day, it would be more like <clears throat> common and more of the regular culture of that time. I see. Yeah. I think I would hate my life. I think I would be one of those engineers that worked in one company for like 30 years. Yeah. I would be rich. I'd have a wife and kids and I'd probably hate my life a little bit or I didn't try more different things. Um, and I think I would be like the stubborn engineer type. If I was, if I grew up in the generation before, mm. uh, yeah, that's why I think I would be. I would be wealthy. I would have not seen the world as much. Like I would be oh, more naive. Sure. Yeah. I would be, uh, way more stubborn. I'll be very close minded. That's just like what I can think of. If I were to transfer me to a generation before, I would be like, I would max min the fucking engineering life as yes. it was before, and then I would just be very close minded to other thoughts. Yes. Uh. Which unfortunately is what I see in some of the other generations of engineers I've seen pre- prior to me, right? Yeah. Uh, that's how I see it as my life. And I feel like if I was the generation after, I don't know. I feel like I'd be, uh, I don't know. I'm trying Plot. to think. <laughs> yeah, I think. Would I be bullied or would I be cool? Because I am, I do like efficiency, but I go against the grain quite a bit. I do push against like norms, but pushing against norms in the generation oh, cool. after is yeah. a cool, right? Um, but I do enjoy efficiency a lot and effectiveness. So I don't How know. Could can help you with that? I think I would be like, uh, if I was a generation after, I would be more risk taking. Yeah. Um, I think I'd be, yeah, I'd be like trying out all these different tech shit, trying to get ahead and stuff, but. I don't know. Maybe trying too much, if that makes sense. You know, like trying to get too into two, two different um, popular communities. Like, you know, be part of the LGBTQ bullshit, even though I'm not part of it kind of thing. You know what I mean? Oh, you think you try to get I, I think I think I would, um, I would advance and cheat the system as much as I can. And it would be in a detriment to my integrity, I feel like. It's, it's it's almost like a scale. I feel like there's an in, in t- integrity scale. If I was in the generation before, I'd be very strict and you know rule based, integrity, efficiency, max man, shit like that, mm-hmm. right? Um, maybe like an asshole to my kids, but my integrity to work would be like very you know, one of those parents. Solid. If, if that yes. if that kind of makes sense, yes, right? I but then I feel like as I go generation after generation, that will kind of dwindle away in terms of how like rigid i am in my thought process Mm. um and then as i'm at the next generation i'll be more willing to uh sacrifice a bit of knowing who i am to trying to become something if that's really interesting what parts of you you feel like are more highlighted and kept depending on what generation you yes you'll be in Uh, uh, yeah that's what i think yeah like i think right now i'm very solid of knowing who i am <clears throat> but flexible enough to change. I feel like if I was a generation before, I would be inflexible to change, but very solid of maybe thinking I know what I am. Yes. And then in the generation after, I'd be too flexible where knowing who I am is in flux also, if I that can, makes sense. I can see that. I think I would agree to that with myself as well. Yeah. But I would say I feel like if I was born in a generation before me, I would get a lot more flack. Or being really stubborn too. Oh, yeah. I feel like because I'd be so set in my ways, like even more than I am now. Well, you're saying generation before, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Then anything that goes against what people say. Yes. Or like what society deems as normal. Yeah. Because in the generation before us, I feel like it's better to adhere to society and what yeah. people like or whatever rules and expectations they have. If you have anything outside of that yeah. and you're stubbornly set on that, then yeah. I feel like you get a lot more flack for that. And I feel like in that area, that'd be highlighted for me. Uh, I see. I see. Yeah, that's true, actually. That's very interesting to see because I actually, now that I think more about it, I do see like some archetypes that we will become if we yeah. were the generation before. The generation after is actually kind of tricky because you don't even know what they are. 
Yeah. Like you, they're kind of fucking blobs right now. Like <laughs> because they haven't grown up enough yet, right? Like yes. we're we're kind of only just forming who we are. Only in the next like five to ten years, right? I'm basing all our judgments on the next generation. Yeah, I like by what we see now, but it might not be true, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's very cool. Actually, I, I never went through that kind of thought process, but I think. I think for sure if I was born generation after, it would just be, this is how I think of it. If I was born generation before, I would think I know who I am. I believe I know who I am right now. And I believe in the next generation, I would want to think I know what I am, if that makes uh, sense. Um, I can see that. As in like that, I will want a certain direction. Yes. And then before, I would think I know a certain direction. And I think in the middle, obviously I think the middle is the best because that's where I am right now. Yeah. I know what I am. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah or maybe i would do the same thing as i am in all, all three generations that would ideally be like the ultimate integrity person or not integrity but the ultimate like true, true person you. would yeah. be the same regardless of the generation but i feel like that's impossible i agree i feel like growing up in any other generation it would make you such a drastically different person by everything you're exposed to your social media yeah all the culture and everything yeah, yeah. for sure interesting yeah i don't know that was one i thought that was like uh just a random one i thought about when i was just walking around i was like man what if i grew up in their fucking shoes like how would that feel right oh yeah if you think about growing up in other people's <clears throat> shoes or like another city in another generation's yeah. shoes like That's regardless of like too. the city even if you were just in edmonton i think growing up in another generation's shoes would be so different like yeah me thinking right now like me right now not being married if i was a generation before is fucking blasphemy yeah yeah like, my parents would be fucking outrageous. Like, you're yeah, already with her for five years. Age, you're gonna die. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's <laughs> oh, going yeah. on, right? If you move it, uh, like, two generations before us, um, you're, like, halfway <laughs> through your life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have enough saved up here right now. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have three houses. What the fuck? You don't have, like, seven kids by now. What <laughs> yeah. the fuck? Yeah. And so, like, how we are right now, I wonder how the generation after us would be like. Like, right now, I'm, unfortunately, almost 30, and obviously not married or any of that shit yet Literally. i wonder how the generation after us would be they'll be like oh shit you got kids at 35 that's so young i feel like that's the case actually. <laughs> yeah, think, yeah yeah that's crazy too because that's a that's unless health technology gets better that's a detriment to our species as a whole yeah like we want more kids at a younger age with prime genes and prime sperm and prime eggs right? unless technology beats you to that like crispr and shit like yeah, that, yeah. then it doesn't really matter what age you have true babies. true like i'm and it takes out all the risk factors i'm still holding out because i don't want kids yet <laughs> that the technology for the woman reproduction system mm -hmm. will get better because no offense the guys is pretty good like yeah. 60, 70 year olds are still getting girls knocked up. So yeah. I assume the sperm still works till then, right? I would say so. But I am holding out because I don't want kids and Joyce is around my age and I want to wait longer. Yeah. It's kind of wild seeing my friends that are my age get pregnant right now. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, to us, that's like kind of crazy, right? Yeah. Like if you're pregnant at any age before like 24, it just feels weird, right? It's like, what the fuck? But back in the day, dude, at twenty four, you're a you're you're starting your path to become a grandmother, right? First kid at fifteen, that means at twenty four, your kid's already like at least nine. Your kid can have a kid now, <laughs> and your that kid, would be normal. Your kid's starting to get ready to have a kid. Yeah, uh, there's no, there was no shame in being a teen mom back then. It was just normal. No shame. It was it was promoted. Yeah, it was required. All right, that was a cool little. I mean, this is this is legit. This random shit I think about when I walk around. <laughs> I think about this stuff too, but I go in circles in my head. I should write some some of this stuff uh, down now. Yeah, next time if you write down a couple of topics like that, I think we'd have fun uh, just thinking about that random shit. Because I think they were all pretty fun. The minute minute was fun, and uh, was it late fall? What's the yes. other one I put? This is the generation one, and then the other one. Oh, travel more in a car or a plane. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was kind of kind of a trick one, kind of a fun one though. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this podcast. We just talked about random topics like these. If you guys are wondering, this is pretty much exploring my brain. So, like all these topics, I randomly come up when I walk around. I think mm -hmm. the fact that I have a podcast is I literally just think of shit and I just pull my phone. But oh man, I should put this as a topic. I think that'd be a fun thing to talk about. Uh, I don't know how other people would do that too. I wonder if they, because like 
most normal people won't be able to explore this thought to the extent that we're exploring it, right? I think it's very hard to have these kind of conversations happen, come up naturally yeah. in your everyday life with friends. Yeah, unless you get high a lot with your friends and shit. Like, I <laughs> yeah. feel like it doesn't really happen that often. I agree. <laughs> like, I can just imagine all of these being a high conversation too. Yeah. Like, hey, I mean, bro, when is a minute not a minute? <laughs> bro, I have so much to say. I have like half an hour's worth of content to say. And then, like, wait, was that a minute or not? <laughs> I think the fact that we're on a podcast too also promotes consistent input from both of you. Yeah. Whereas in a normal conversation, in a lot of ways, you might just let it die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. It's like forced. It's like forced in a good way. Dude, that's so true. There's so many conversations, like either at work or with like some random person. They just start talking, and I'm like, I'm gonna end this. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm just right? straight up like, I'm yeah. gonna leave. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm, I'm good. This is yeah. Enough. But he was like, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, like you're not forced into any um situation where you must contribute. Yeah. So then, like, especially at work parties, like at some point they're just talking. You know, you're like in a group. They talk to each other. You it's like gonna go in my head. You like yeah. You you. <laughs> You contribute a little bit and then it gets a little wild or it gets it ter- turned into a way that you don't really want to talk about. Like if they start talking about like L- L- LGBTQ stuff, you start like backing out. You're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm done. I'm going to walk away. <laughs> the fucking Homer Simpson goes back <laughs> in the grass. Yeah. Uh, anyways, cool talks. We'll, uh, we'll figure out our next podcast is, and we'll try to get it more consistent on a weekly basis. So it'll be all Gucci. Yes, uh, sir. We'll have some good info. So thank you guys. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.